Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own trifold wallet. So these patterns are going to be available as both an acrylic template and also as a PDF pattern pack. So if you've gone down the PDF printable route, we want to make sure that you print them to actual size or 100%. Once you've printed out your patterns, you can then choose to reinforce them to make them a bit more easy to use when we put them onto our leather. So I am just going to glue mine onto some card. All it does is help reinforce and make these patterns a bit easier to use than if they were just left as paper. So you should now have all your patterns cut out and looking a little bit like this. And we are now ready to transfer these onto our chosen leather. Now, as always, when it comes to the choice of leather and what thicknesses to use and where, all the information is included in the PDF pattern pack download as well as the acrylic templates. Now when it comes to cutting my pieces out with the leather what I like to do is roughly cut and oversize these before actually cutting them out more accurately. So now you have all your pieces cut out we can start to do some edge finishing. Now, depending on the type of leather that you use will depend on whether you will be using an edge paint or an edge stain. Now, for me, I am actually going to be using the clear Tolkanol because that works really well on the leather that I have chosen to use to make this wallet. What we can now do is using a hot crease, draw a crease line across the top of these pieces. Now, when using the thin leather like we are for this wallet, what I like to do is actually put my piece onto a bit of cardboard and that's just going to help get a better crease line in. So once you have done creasing, we can start to assemble the card pockets. What we're going to do first is sky for the bottoms of the T-slots and along the sides so they are ready to stitch in. You can also skive the two short ends of your top strip that's going to be attached to the outer body. We'll be skiving these ends down to nothing as well so that when the wallet is assembled there won't be any lumps or bumps where the inner wallet and the outer wallet are stitched together. Once you have done your skiving, we can now start to assemble the card pockets. With the markings that are on the pattern for the card backing, you can transfer these onto your leather ones and that we can use as a guide for when we're gluing in our T-slots. When it comes to the gluing, you need to glue both pieces of leather that are going to be stuck together. And once tacky, you can then start to stick the first of your T-slots in. You can now use your pattern and mark on the green line on the bottom of your T-slot. Then using a ruler, mark a line between these points and follow this with your chosen stitch marker. And you can now start to stitch your pockets into your backing. So I'm going to be using the double hand or saddle stitch method for this. I'm going to be doing every other stitch mark.
So once the first pocket has been stitched in, you can tap the stitches with a hammer before cutting your threads. And you can now glue on the second T-slot and repeat the process. And once you have done stitching them all and getting them all assembled, what you can do if you are using linen thread is put a little bit of glue on the ends of those bits of thread. Or if you are using a polyester thread, you can use a lighter and mount the ends down to secure them in place. Once the second T-slot has been attached, you can then glue on the front pocket. And you're going to repeat this three times for each of our card pocket sections. So we can now start to put some stitching onto our pockets. So we're going to have a right, a left and a centre one. And in your patterns are included the stitch guides that go along with these. Now you only really need to cut one of these out. And so I've cut out the right stitching guide. And what I'm going to do is place this on top of my pocket backing template piece and transfer the stitch marking guides. Because from using this one template, I can stitch mark for the right, left and centre pockets. So before we transfer those guides onto our our pockets. What we're going to do is actually trim any excess from them. And once you've marked on where your stitching can go, you can use your chosen stitch marker and stitch mark all the way through. Now on the center piece, I'm actually only going to stitch mark what will be the right hand side of that pocket to start with, because the left hand side, I'm going to stitch into the main part of the wallet. So I'm gonna stitch mark that when I get onto that point. So now we have stitch marked our pocket pieces, they are ready to be stitched together. So what we're gonna do is using the double hand or saddle stitch method is we're gonna stitch along those lines that we have just created with our stitch marker. Now I am choosing to start with two back stitches. We're gonna finish with one and a half and that way both ends are going to match. Once you've done your stitching line, you can then use your hammer to flatten the stitches and trim off the excess thread. 
and then using either some glue or a lighter you can then secure the ends of the threads. Now we've got our pockets together, what we're going to do is start to trim them so we can assemble them into the main part of the wallet. So on both the right and left hand pockets, what we're going to do is just trim along that edge with the stitch line only. And you can use the trim line, which is the red line marked on your patterns for this. With the centre pocket, what we're going to do is trim both long sides. Once we've done trimming, we can finish those edge with our stain or edge paint. And then put a hot crease line along here. And now we've done that, we can use our inner body template to mark on where these pockets are going to go. And now we know where they're going to go, we can use our glue and just glue along those areas on both the inner wallet and on each of the pocket pieces. You will also need to apply glue to the side where your central pocket will be attached in. I forgot to draw this line in before gluing, so that is what I am doing here. Once the glue has gone tacky, you can then attach each of the pieces into the wallet. To secure these in place we need to do a bit more stitching, so we now need to stitch across the top of each of these pockets and you can use your stitching guides from earlier to mark where that needs to start and finish. Once you've marked those in, you can then stitch mark all the way through with your chosen stitch marker. Now on our centre pocket, we also need to stitch mark all the way through that one side that we haven't yet stitch marked. And we can stitch that in at this point as well. Now once you've done all your stitch marking, you can now stitch your inner wallet. Now it doesn't really matter where you choose to start on this wallet, and what we're going to do is use the double hand or saddle stitch method, and each section is going to start with two back stitches and finish with one and a half, so that they all match. Once you've finished your stitching, you can tap your stitches flat with a hammer and then trim the ends. And you can also use a little bit of PVA glue or a lighter just to secure the ends in place, depending on what thread you have used. Now we've done that, we can trim the top edge of our inner body. So with your inner body pattern, you can mark on the red line that goes across the top. And then using a ruler and a rotary knife, you can trim this and we can now do our finishing touches to this edge. So we're going to stain, polish and crease this. Now we've done that, we can put the inner body to one side for a moment whilst we start assembling the outer body. So to start with, we're going to glue our top strip into the main body. And now I like to mark in where this is going to be with a pen and ruler and use that as my gluing and alignment guide.
and trim any excess. We can now mark on where our stitch line is going to go. And then stitch mark and stitch this on. Once you have stitched that top edge, you can use your patterns and trim across the top. And do your finishing touches to this edge. Once your outer body is ready, what we can now do is actually mark on for our stitching for the rest of the wallet. So we can get our outer body pattern and transfer the stitching location marks. We can now glue the inner wallet and the outer wallet together. So we're going to apply glue to both pieces and when tacky we can stick those in making sure that everything is lining up. Now this can be a bit tricky so what I like to do is stick in the two end pieces first and then use my stitch guide that I marked on earlier to line up the centre part of the wallet. Once stuck in, we can now stitch mark our wallet. Now, when it does come to the stitch marking, you have the option to either stitch mark from the inside or the outside. So depending on what you have chosen, you can use your pattern to mark those on to your wallet and then follow the line. Now, one thing to note is that if you are choosing to stitch mark all the way through, you need to make sure your stitch markers are very much upright so that they come out in the right location on the other side of the wallet and not too close or too far far away from the edge. Once you've done your stitch marking, you are now ready to stitch the final parts of your wallet, starting each section with two back stitches and finishing with one and a half. Now, because we've got quite a few layers of leather here, I actually like to use an awl just to open those holes up, even though I've stitch marked all the way through. So once you have finished your stitching, we need to trim off the remaining excess on our wallet and you can mark that on from the pattern of the outer wallet.
And now what I like to do, particularly for these ones, is to actually draw a line between them to make sure that they are nice and even. And once you are happy, you can then trim off the excess. And then apply your edge finish and polish. And also recrease around the inside and outside of the entire wallet. Now the final thing to do is with a bone folder, remove any excess glue from inside each of the pockets, particularly the card slots. And so that is how to create your own tri-fold wallet. I hope you enjoyed watching and you learned something new. If you did enjoy the video, please click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more videos and tutorials. And I shall see you in the next video.